Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Cyber Lab, and today will be another video about Open Media Val. In this video we're gonna run Open Media Val 7 and we're gonna show how you can manage your Docker containers directly on the Open Media Val page called Compose. And you're gonna ask why you not use the portainer? Because Compose it's another version, and in this option you can manage your containers, you can manage your volumes, you can manage your networks and other things which make easy and everything directly the web page for Open Media Val. So you don't need to install another container, you don't need to manage another container only to manage your applications. So if you like this idea, want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed and let's understand a little bit more about it. Before we go to explain how you can manage your containers in on Open Media Val, we need to explain a little bit more about our setup, what we need to arrive at this stage. In this way, you're not totally lost. If you need a little bit more details, you can go one of your, my previous video what I explain step by step how you can install Docker, how you can install Compose, and continue on. This reason that I will not focus so much in this specific information. So, first thing, let's go to my screen where I have my Open Media Val install. If you look, this Open Media Val has been on for a couple of hours, not so long, and I have a average of usage really low, and I have around 16 gigabytes of run memory. And if you look, most of them will be zero, zero, sometimes they jump a little bit over, but most of the time they will keep in 0% because this CPU is i5 and I only use this system only for backup. This reason that you're gonna see that you have uh, around 80 terabytes of data and I have a 3.37 free and use almost four terabytes. If I look for my main hard drive, I have 500 gigabytes, but I only use 3.75. This one is because I only have the open system run in this system. What else is important for me to know? It's uh, basically this system's update and nothing else. Have this one in mind, what we need to have installed, we need to have installed the Open Media Val Extras. This Open Media Val Extras is only run a simple script. This script is really easy, you only need to run it directly in your putty and that, that's it installed. But once that you install Open Media Val Extras, you can come here in System, Plugs, and you need to install the Plug Compose and here is the plug that you need to install. In my case, I already installed it, so I don't need to do anything. To install your Docker, you need to come here in Service, Compose, Settings, and you need to have this information installed. Docker, Data, and Backup. Backup if you want to do backup, Data where you're gonna date or save your data, and a Compose files where you're gonna save your Compose files. This reason is just really important for you come here in Storage, Share Folder, and you have those three created. In this way, basically, you can manage and make sure that they have their own specific folder for it. So once that you configure this, basically, you can come here, save, and start Docker, and the Docker install. So now we can start to configure my our first container. If you come here in File, right, I have one container that's up. If I come here and delete this, now I don't have any container in my system. Of course, once that you delete, they will prompt you that message you want to apply, you need to say yes, yes, otherwise you're not going to have permission to do anything in this application, or at least not work. Now we can create our first container. How we can create our first container? We can come here, add, and we can put add, and here we'll have my empty page. Here basically you're going to put all the configuration for your file, but why you need to look online in the Docker Hub and find something, if you come here in File, Add, and you can use an example. So if I use example, I have a lots of different examples of uh, containers that I can install. All of those is only, you click, install, and really simple, minimum configuration. But let's say that I want to install Docker Wiki. So I will put Docker Wiki, I will put the name of this container, and now I can put Save. Once that put save, do not start because basically I need to configure it. To configure it, if you come here in edit, 
I can modify this information. But before I start modifying, let's copy this and open a notepad. In this notepad, I will save this information only because I want to make sure that all these configurations proper, configurate and easy for me. So first thing that we need to do, let's go first in volume. To find my volume, I need to come here in storage, I come file, and I have all those different storage. So in my case, I will use the storage called Docker, and I need to copy my absolute path. Once that I copy, I come here and I overwrite this information. So in this way, I will have this absolute path. Inside this absolute path will be Docker, inside will be Daku and config. So everything that I need. Now, the next stage, we need to configure our user. To configure our user, first, you need to create a user dedicated for my Docker apps. Otherwise, you can put all your system risk. So let's create a different user called Docker apps. In this case, I already create a user called Docker app. And here I set right my password. But what I want to make sure is I select this disallowed account modification. What it means, this one take a permission for the modified own account or other account. In this way, they cannot change the password. You cannot block things and you cannot delete things. So it's basically a restrict user and exactly that we want. We want that this user only have access for this, that specific folder and nothing else. Don't have access for anything else apart for this folder. This is that I will leave as a group user. Once that you finish it, what you need to do, you need to configure the ACL. So to configure the ACL, we need to open permissions and here in permission, we need to select what permission that this user has. So Docker app, I want to have a permission to read and write only the Docker and the rest I want no access. Why don't want access? Because I don't want that they modify anything in those folders. I only want permission that specific folder. This reason that interesting to have all your Docker application in only one place separately for the rest of your system. So either that someone access this user or have the user ID, they will not be able to access any more information. So once that you do it, you need to put save and now we can put apply. But this one don't give you those information, PUAD, PJT. My page I read open put with that same IP address and put open and I will root and I will look in as a root. Once they're logging as a root, I suggest you to have a user on to login put, but because OpenMediaVal asks you to define a password for the root, I use this one. And now inside this one, I needed to find the ID for that specific user. So if I put ID, Docker app, they will give the ID from this user. In this case, the UID will be 1002 and the JID will be 100. So I have this one in mind. I can come here back and I will put 100 and 1002. So now what else I need to configure? I need to change my ports. Why change my ports? Let's close this because I don't need any more. If you look here, they use protocol HTTP and this is that you use port 8. Anyway, sometimes you can set up for protocol HTTPS and we'll use 443. But in this case, we're going to modify both. So we'll put port 8 and port 450. So if I want to access it, I need to access or port 450 or port 8.5. All the information after you don't touch because this one is related for internal ports for the container. Once that you configure everything the way that you want, don't forget to put your correctly time zone. I can come here and copy. And now I can come here back in files, what has been read create, come and edit. I can modify here or I can only overwrite. And here I already have the new information. If I can come here and put save. Once that is save, I can come here and put up. Once that I put up, they will basically create all this information and now I can close it. Of course, they will ask me to apply this one. So I'll wait one second, it's up. So now what we need to do, we need to come here in service and they will appear all the service that's running. So if I click here, the status of this application is running. If I come here in log, they will give some information and this one is still in this page. If I wanted to have a frequent update information, I can click here and that's it will be update out all the time and will not appear that message end. So if I have any more modification in this container, they will appear the next line and what happened. So let's wait a couple of minutes until they finish to configure. Once that we are waiting to configure, let's go a little bit more for the rest of the information. So, so far I show you how to use settings 
file and understand a little bit more about the service. Now we can go to status and we can see how much of our CPU that that application is using. So you have all the applications, you can see which one that use more CPU, which one that use more RAM memory and continue on. In my case, they're not use so much data, so it's totally fine. Next stage, we can go for images. Here do appear all the images that you download. Remember, if you start to have too many images, you always can delete the oldest one. And here you can see that's available and it's in use. The ones that's not used, potentially can delete it. And ones that you need to use again, they will download the new or update revision. Now, if you come here for network, they appear all the networks that I have. In my case, I have Daku because I just created this app and here bridge and others. If perhaps you want to choose the host, don't forget to use network host and that will connect for this and continue on. Now, next thing that we can look, it's a volumes. In this case, I don't have any volume, but you can have a quick look what volumes that has been created. So if you use, let's say, portainer, they will create a virtual volume instead of create absolute volume. Also, you can set up to create a, a Docker volume instead of absolute path. Now, Docker files, they will give a little bit about Docker files, schedule, you, you can schedule something, let's say to do a backup and other things, you can select what kind of schedule that you want. And here you can restore. Those two parts, we're gonna explain a little bit more in the next video, but basically we go for all the applications. So if you come back in service and select and come here log, now this one say done. So this application has been complete, we can access it. For access, we need to access using port 85. Once that you access it, they rather give port 85 and they will give this DACO week what you can start to look for media, sites, you can create a new sites and other things. So in this way, you can do everything that you want with this application and you still using directly the Open Media Val without need to use Portainer, without need to use all the applications. Basically, you only do it. And here in file, you can create as many files, you can auto-compose, you can create from URL, you can use examples or create an empty one. So in this way, we show a little bit more how you can use the Compose, how you can use this application, and this way you can start to create a new Compose or new Dockers without need to have the portainer installed. So we arrive in the end of the video. If you guys like the video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and see you next time. Bye.